Whether you want to detect or purify a virus like novel coronavirus or any other protein or biological compound with high accuracy, antibodies are a popular tool. For normal applications, polyclonal antibodies are appropriate, but for more sensitive work, monoclonal antibodies are preferred. Welcome to Explore Bio and today I will talk about what are monoclonal antibodies, how they are different from polyclonal antibodies and in a stepwise manner how they are developed. At last I will mention some of the most popular applications of monoclonal antibodies. So watch the video till the end. So let's get started. Antibodies are the proteins called as immunoglobulins produced by a specific type of immune cells called as activated B cells or plasma cells or B lymphocytes. The antibodies are highly specific for their targets known as antigens. The idea that some molecules which were later named as antibodies can be designed that selectively target a disease causing agent was first proposed by Paul Erich. He called them magic bullets. Antigens are primarily proteins but they can also be polysaccharides or more complex conjugates with nucleic acids or lipids. Antibodies are produced as an immune response against an antigen that is encountered by the body. Usually an antigen induces different types of B cells to produce multiple types of antibodies called as polyclonal antibodies. Their development is easier and less expensive. But one of the major problems with polyclonal antibodies is their high cross reactivity with other antigens. They target multiple epitopes of an antigen and sometimes other antigens too. This makes them less specific. Thus, for sensitive applications like disease diagnosis and targeting, these are less suitable. Monoclonal antibodies are the antibodies that are derived from a single type of B cell population and are exact clones of each other, and thus identifies and binds a specific epitope of an antigen. The development of monoclonal antibodies is sophisticated and technically challenging and expensive too but the chances of cross reactivity with other antigens is very low. One should remember that like most cells, B cells die after few replications, thus are mortal. So how to harvest large number of antibodies if B cell producing our desired antibodies dies off? It seems impossible, right? But these two scientists, Kohler and Milstein, devised hybridoma technology to develop antibodies in large quantities and identical specificities against target antigen or epitope. In this technology, two types of cells, namely antibody producing B cell and myeloma cells, are fused together to get immortal B cell that replicates indefinitely, producing large number of antibodies. Now let's learn how hybridoma technique works. For making a hybridoma, you need two types of cells, a B cell and a myeloma cell. B cells are obtained from spleen of an organism like mouse or rat in which an antigen is administered. This antigen elicits an immune response in the organism which produces variety of antibodies known as polyclonal antibodies that can be collected from the spleen. If the aim is to get polyclonal antibodies, one can get it from this step. We can also select a particular type of B cell to get monoclonal antibodies that I will be explaining in a moment. Myeloma cells are modified tumor cells that lack thymidine kinase or, or hypoxanthin guanine phosphoribosyl transferase. Myeloma cells are immortal that is they will grow indefinitely in a culture medium. Next what you do is fusion of these two types of cell to get a hybrid cell. Fusion is done using polyethylene glycol or electric pulse which disrupts the cell membrane intermittently to allow two cells to merge and produce a hybrid cell. The process of cell fusion is not 100% efficient and after fusion you will get hybridized cells as well as unhybridized B cells and myeloma cells too. Hence the hybrids need to be selected out of heterogeneous population of cells. The process of selecting hybrid is quite easy to understand. For selecting desired hybridomas, all the cells are grown on a special selection media known as HAT medium, known as hypoxanthin aminopterin thymidine medium. It has aminopterin, a drug that blocks the de novo pathway of DNA synthesis which is essential for a cell to divide. The only remaining option for a cell to synthesize DNA is by alternate pathway known as salvage pathway using hypoxanthin and thymidine as precursors 
provided the cell has the required enzymes to convert these substrates. The B cells have both the enzymes of salvage pathway that is HGPRT and TK and will grow but for limited divisions and dies off. But the myeloma cells are TK mutant or HGPRT mutant that could not produce DNA precursors via salvage pathway and will not survive on the head medium. A hybridoma of B cell and myeloma cell has some added benefits. It has HGPRT and TK to carry out salvage pathway of DNA synthesis and also they can divide indefinitely the characteristic of myeloma cell. In this way using head medium ultimately you will get hybridoma cells only. Next challenge is that after selecting on the head you get a heterogeneous population of hybridoma cells producing multiple types of antibodies some of which are of desired specificities while others are irrelevant to us. But you want to have only one type of antibody producing cell that produce monoclonal antibodies of our interest. This is done by diluting the culture cells to the extent that each well of the culture plate has only a single cell. Later a hybridoma cell producing the desired type of antibody is selected using ELISA or related methods against antigen of interest. The selected hybridoma can be clonally propagated for mass production of monoclonal antibody. You can learn more about how ELISA works in my other video. Now let's talk about some of the major application of monoclonal antibodies. Number one is the disease diagnosis using ELISA. For example, novel coronavirus detection. You can watch my video on how antigen and antibody kit works for coronavirus detection. Protein capture and purification for a structural or the functional analysis. Western blotting for detection and quantification of a specific protein or compound in a sample. Antibody for drug targeting. Cytotoxic agent may be attached to the antibody against cancerous cell and may be used for treating cancer. And there are many such applications of monoclonal antibodies. So that's all about the today's video. If you find the video useful, do share with your friends. Mention in the comment about any specific video request. Subscribe to get notified about my latest uploads. Do check my playlist for other popular videos. And finally, thanks for watching.